Hello everyone, we're going to start with a new chapter in mechanics, which is mechanical oscillation. A lot of applications rely on the vibratory motion in our daily life, starting from the hearing process, ending with the atomic scale and atomic bonding. In order to study all of these, we need to start with a very simple idea, which is the harmonic oscillator. What is a harmonic oscillator? And how does it function? What controls oscillations? All of this will be covered at the end or throughout this chapter. The main objectives of this chapter are defining oscillatory phenomena and giving examples about them, distinguish between damped and undamped oscillations and oscillators as well, establish the differential equation that governs simple harmonic motion, and finally give examples of the driven mechanism of damped oscillation. Before we start with the physics of this chapter, we're going to step a bit into mathematics. We're going to dedicate all this session as the first section of this chapter only for math requisites. Let's go there and check what mathematical ideas we need to know before we start with oscillations as a physical phenomenon. Starting with circular functions, or what's known as trigonometric functions. They are simply sinusoidal functions that are characterized by their symmetry and periodicity. The general form of any sinusoidal function is y equals sine 2 pi over t0 x plus b. Notice that we are dealing with this as a mathematical approach. So you notice that the variables are x and y, where x is our primary variable and y is our dependent variable. A is called the amplitude of the wave-like curve. T0 is referred to as the periodicity of the function. B is a constant that contributes for the y-intercept point. If you check the curves that we have seen now, these are trigonometric functions. They are simply circular functions that differ by their initial conditions. These two functions start at zero, so when x is zero, y is also zero. While this curve here starts from a certain point which is not zero when x is zero. All these graphs are periodic and symmetric, you notice. They move above the axis the same way they move below it. That's why uh, they are referred to as wave-like shapes or sinusoidal functions. Something worth mentioning as well, since we are dealing with this as a first step, A, being the amplitude, should always be positive. Now you might read this as y equals minus A sine whatsoever. Nevertheless, the amplitude is taken as absolute value of minus A, which is A. So for the time being, throughout all this lesson, we're going to refer to A as a positive value representing the amplitude. Now. Another important thing about circular functions is the derivatives. The derivative of a circular function is also circular. For instance, when you derive sine x, its derivative is cosine x. If you derive y, which is cosine x, then y prime equals minus sine x. A good reminder to remember these all the time is imagining this trigonometric circle in front of you, where sine is on the axis of ordinates and cosine is on the abscissa axis. This is the circle here. Now, when we derive, we move clockwise. Yes, so this is how we derive. If you have sine, you get cosine. If you have cosine, you get minus sine because you are in the negative y region. In general, if you are deriving a function, y which is sine u, where u itself is a function of x, then, the derivative of sine u becomes cosine u, just like cosine x, but we add to it the u prime, which is the direct derivative of u. These are things that we have covered in mathematics previously, and what we are discussing here is a quick revision. So in case you have any problems, understanding these, refer to your math course, or simply ask within the comments about it. Passing to some trigonometric relations that are also beneficial, and a quick advice before I start with them, 
you do not need to memorize these if you know them it's great if not just have this paper in front of you and whenever needed you can refer to it so we have some relations between trigonometric lines for instance sine of x plus pi over 2 equals cosine x so if i have an angle which is pi over 2 plus x let's say x is here and i'm going to draw the circle now okay it's not a perfect circle but i think you got the point now sine of this angle this angle which is pi over 2 plus x is nothing but if this is sine is nothing but cosine of this angle which is x so sine of x plus pi over 2 is equal to cosine x while cosine of this angle is in this quadrant so it's negative that's why it becomes minus sine x sine of minus x becomes minus sine x and cosine minus x is cosine x so these are as i said before just extra information uh, relations that you might need later some more complicated relations are cosine a plus b in which it becomes cosine a multiplied by cosine b minus sine a sine b and sine of a plus b equals sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b once again just have these on you in case you need them here is a quick checkpoint to make sure that you understood what we have discussed before and you are familiar with the equations consider the circular function y equals 4 sine 2x plus pi over 2 indicate the amplitude and the period of f of x determine dy by dx or simply the derivative now i would like you to solve this on your own then as we always do we're going to dedicate another video in which we solve all these checkpoints The second math checkpoint goes or applies or is more into applications about trigonometric lines. We are given sine and cosine of angle pi over 3, sine and cosine of the angle pi over 4, which is by the way 45 degrees, and you are asked to determine without a calculator. I'm pretty sure that you have calculators and you can find the answers, but I would like you to try to apply what we have about the uh, trigonometric relations to find these given angles sine of pi over 2 plus pi over 3 cosine pi over 12 sine minus pi over 3 and sine 7 pi over 2 try to, decomp to decompose the given angles in case it is not clear or obvious again you will find the solution of this math checkpoint in a separate video now getting back to the math requisites and continuing the basic skills that we need now we will move to differential equations. We have discussed differential equations in previous chapters, most probably in the chapter of linear momentum. As discussed before, differential equations show a relation between a function and its derivatives. For example, you will find y in terms of y prime and y double prime, or maybe something else as well. We studied a simple differential equation in which y double prime equals to constant and its solution was y equal kx squared plus bx plus c. We learned how to find this out. Right now, we're not going to need that. But we will add to this a new differential equation having the form y double prime plus k squared y equals to zero, which is notice here that k squared is always positive. So you will find that y double prime equals minus k squared y. So you have a function y that upon deriving twice, we get minus k squared times the original function. If you think about it mathematically, mathematically, it's a bit weird. Because when we derive a function, usually if it's of power two, it becomes of power one, etc. So here is a function that upon deriving once and twice, it is returning to its original state or phase, but it's multiplied by a negative number as well. This second order differential equation has a general solution, which is y equals a sine kx plus b cosine kx, where k is this, nothing but this value, k squared, which is the coefficient of y. Now, we will not go into where does this equation come from. We just need to know that the solution is found there. a and b are usually constants that we need to determine. But what we're going to do is we're going to benefit of what we learned in trigonometry or what I told you just to know, 
in which cosine a plus b or sine a plus b can be decomposed into cosine times cosine, sine times sine. If you take this side, the left-hand side, and compare it to this, you notice that they are similar where a and b should take some trigonometric line. So, using this identity here, we can simply assume that the solution of y double prime plus k squared y equal to zero is not a combination of sine and cosine. Rather, it is this. It is either y equals a cosine kx plus b or b prime or sine kx plus b. Regardless of whether you use cosine or sine, notice that you reduced your work big time. Instead of having sine and cosine together, we just have either sine or cosine. Okay? That's the basic idea we need to know. And a very important thing, notice the relations. When we started with trigonometric uh, functions or circular functions, we ended up now with differential equations leading to these functions. How will that help us in our chapter? We will see later. Our third checkpoint in which we apply differential equation techniques is math checkpoint three. A function f of x verifies the differential equation y double prime plus 16 over 25 y equals to zero. Determine a and b if the solution is y equals four sine ax plus b and its y-intercept is plus b. It's a pretty interesting exercise. Try to solve it relying on the previous slide. You don't need to memorize anything. If you want to solve this, just check what we have discussed before and mimic or duplicate the solution as it is. Math check point four. Consider the differential equation y double prime plus nine y equals to zero. Determine the solution. However, this time we are given that the representative curve passes through point zero five, and its the and its derivative at that point is zero. Now, here, I'm trying to underline this, and the derivative there is zero. Use the given data effectively. Now, we have one more further step that you need to apply, which is knowing this differential equation, you should know the solution of such a differential equation. Okay? Try to suggest either cosine or sine. So, either cosine or sine, either cosine or sine, and simply apply. Okay? Once again, I forgot to say that in checkpoint three. Again, checkpoints three and four will be discussed like one and two in a separate video. Moving to our final math checkpoint. The given graph shows the variation of a function y equals a cosine ax plus b. This function verifies the differential equation y double prime plus 0.36y equals to zero. An important thing you can notice here is that you are given the function y equals a cosine, you are given its graph and some values on that graph, you are also given a differential equation. This is ve very similar to what we're going to encounter in the physics of this chapter. So this might be the most important application for this section. In part one, determine a knowing that it's positive, using the graph determine a and b. That's all concerning the math section. Thank you for your time. Review what we have discussed and solve the assigned exercises, and we'll discuss that in another video. In the upcoming section, we'll start with the physics of mechanical oscillations. Let's go. Mm -hmm.